U.S. National Security Advisor Jake Sullivan sitting down with China's top foreign affairs official for an intense seven-hour meeting in Rome. The officials discussed the Russian invasion of Ukraine, of course, and the Biden administration's concern that Beijing may try to help Russia evade global sanctions. Joining me right now is Fox News senior strategic analyst General Jack Keane. General, great to have you this morning. Thanks so much for being here. What was your takeaway from the meeting in Rome uh, in terms of Beijing and the U.S. now? Well, first of all, uh, we've got to give the Biden administration some credit here. Once again, they've had some exquisite intelligence that normally would not be released to the public, but indeed it was, that China was looking, excuse me, Russia is looking for economic and military assistance from China. Um, and certainly that was center stage at this meeting, although it had been scheduled back in November, and there are other issues on the table dealing with Taiwan, Iran, uh, Afghanistan. Uh, certainly this Ukraine issue is, is front and center. I, I, I wouldn't be surprised if President Xi in his own mind with his uh, elite advisors would like to have a redo of that strategic partnership agreement that he and Russia had uh, at the Beijing Olymp Olympics, which was such, such a public declaration of the unity that they're going to have going forward. And now, um, almost a month later, Russia is faltering in this military objective to topple the regime. And not only that, uh, they're becoming an international pariah, and the NATO is being strengthened and more unified, and the EU is becoming, will become much more influential as a global entity itself. All that said, Maria, President Xi is not backing off on that partnership. There is no way that he will dilute this relationship or distance himself from it. Uh, given the fact that he's going to be enshrined later this year at the National Party Congress, and to admit somehow that his strategic partnership, the number one partnership he has with any country in the world, uh, was something he should not have entered into. That's not a tenable position for him to be in. He's going to make certain that that partnership is solidified going forward. And I trust yeah. that. Uh, National Security Advisor Sullivan certainly made the point to him, if you enter into any assistance, economic or military, we are going to hammer you with tough sanctions. Yeah, I, I want to ask you about that, because what, what would that look like? What kind of pressure would the U.S. put on China? I, I, I mean, I, I was struck yesterday when one of my guests mentioned the fact that it's interesting that Joe Biden keeps blaming Vladimir Putin for inflation, but we haven't seen any blame on China for COVID, right? Uh, no comment on COVID at all and the uh, Chinese Communist Party's culpability. White House Press Secretary Jen Psaki was pressed yesterday and what it would take for the Biden administration to take any action against China. Listen to this. Here's what she said. On Ukraine, the president has made clear that he sort of has a red line with Russia. Does he have a similar red line um, now with China assisting Russia? We don't like red lines around here, so I'm not going to use that phrasing. I would look at, well, we are certainly watching closely uh, the actions of China. Whether uh, whether that is support of any kind, uh, in support of any kind uh, for Russia, and certainly there would be consequences to that. Uh, I do think we look at it through a slightly different prism. I mean, Russia is invading Ukraine uh, actively. So what are the consequences? What, what, what would the U.S. be prepared to do in terms of uh, punishing China for support of Russia? Well, there would be secondary sanctions. I'm convinced the Biden administration will take some action. It, the pattern of not telling us uh, what that is, uh, we, certainly we went down that road uh, prior to, the, to Russia's invasion. You know, we were trying to determine what those sanctions are, make certain the Russians know what they are, so they can uh, gauge what the, what the impending impact is going to be. Uh, they're, they're not going to reveal that to the public. But based on, based on their track record here and the pursuit of sanctions dealing with Russia, admittedly, it started out slow and there are a lot of carve-outs, but the sanctions overall are getting better. Uh, most of us agree mm. that it would be much better if they were sanctioning Russia's major industry, which we're really not doing. But I'm, I'm convinced... Uh, that they will sanction China. Listen, China is tied into the EU, major trading partner, uh, major trading partner with the United States. That at this particular time, with COVID and the slowdown of President Xi's economy that has already taken, 
taken place and the demographic problems he's having with his workforce, he does not want an additional burden on his economy as a result of U.S. and yeah. EU sanctions that would be applied to him. But it, hopefully this will deter him from providing any tangible support. But here's what they've already done. When MasterCard and Visa right. bailed out on Russia, China offered their, their credit card system. When we took Russia That's out right. of the SWIFT system, although disappointingly there's some carve-outs there, China offered their international telecommunication system to replace them. So they're already providing assistance. I'm a little disappointed that the Biden administration didn't lay that out, that China's already taken action, and therefore we should mm. be taking action now, not talking about future action. Yeah, it's a great point, General. What about the Iran deal? Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov reportedly told his Iranian counterpart this morning that an agreement on the revival of the Iran nuclear deal is on the finish line. It comes after Russia made new demands that Western sanctions would not interfere with its trade and military cooperation with Iran. Halted negotiations initially. Uh, General Keane, what would you say about this nuclear deal and where it stands today? Well, this is pretty rich. I mean, uh, here are the Russians uh, negotiating with us on, on behalf of Iran to make this deal, and now they want an exemption from the Western sanctions that are being imposed on, on them in the 11th hour. Uh, I don't care what, what reason the nuclear deal is stopped. I'm all for stopping it, uh, <clears throat> whether it's Russia or the other powers doing it. Certainly, the Biden administration is absolutely committed to having this deal. And the people that know what the details of it are, to include some people on the negotiating team who quit over this, they know full well that this deal is worse than the 2015 deal. And it certainly doesn't meet the, the stated simple objective when the Biden administration came in. When it comes to the Iran and nuclear deal, we're going to lengthen the deal and strengthen the deal. That is not going to happen yeah. here at all. It's going to be considerably weaker. We are walking into a terrible situation if that deal get, gets approved. We can already see, Maria, look, at the deal doesn't cover Iran's malign behavior. It doesn't cover ballistic missiles. Both of them are on display this week as Iran attacks Erbil with ballistic missiles. Yeah. That's malign behavior, to be sure. And ballistic missiles are not covered in the deal. Another absurdity. Yeah. Uh, as to why we would ever make a deal that doesn't restrict Iran's incredibly malign behavior. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, can you explain how the U.S. is working with Russia on an Iran deal uh, while also denouncing what they're doing in Ukraine? Uh, does it make any sense to you? I don't know how you parsed. No, it makes no sense, Maria. I don't know how you parsed the difference. Uh, all negotiations yeah. should have been stopped uh, when, when Russia invaded uh, Ukraine. Uh, that <clears throat> you're trying to split that kind of a difference and, and, and pretend that we can just be pragmatic in, in the face of the yeah. international crimes and the killing of thousands of people. Uh, the whole world is watching it. Russia's becoming an international par pariah. They are going to be Absolutely. labeled as yeah. international criminals as a result of it. We should have shut it down. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. General, well said. Uh, that's one thing the administration is not telling us much about. General, thanks very much for being here this morning. Always a pleasure to speak with you, sir. General Jack Keane.